loves him and truly, truly admires what he's done. His life has been an incredible life. It's been an a awe-inspiring life. And uh, I just want to tell you that uh, having his support really, I think it adds just total credence to what I'm trying to do and to what we're all trying to do. So uh, I just want to uh, introduce Dr. Ben Carson, a special, special person, special man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you, Donald. And, you know, this whole process, uh, getting involved uh, in the political process, was something that I, I never particularly intended to do. Um, but, you know, I listened to the people, and it was really all about the people, and it continues to be all about the people. You know, it's not about the Republican Party or the Democratic Party. It's about the people of America. And uh, what I would have been seeing recently uh, is political operatives and parties once again trying to assert themselves and trying to thwart the will of the people. I find that that is an extraordinarily dangerous place to be right now. And, you know, I want the voice of the people to be heard. I want the political process to play out in the way that it should play out. And, uh, you know, I think the Republican Party particularly would be very wise not to adopt a, let's stop this guy and let's promote this guy policy, but rather – uh, start thinking about what are the things that are going to be helpful for America. Right now, you know, we're in a process of going off the deep end. We're going off the cliff. We're fiscally irresponsible. We're hating each other. We're destroying ourselves. A house divided against itself cannot stand. We're failing to take a leadership position on the world stage. Now, some people have said, well, why, why would you uh, get behind a man like Donald Trump? I'll tell you why. Uh, first of all, I've come to, to know uh, Donald Trump over the last few years. He is actually a very intelligent man who cares deeply about America. There are two different Donald Trumps. There's the one you see on the stage, and there's the one who's very uh, cerebral, sits there and considers things very carefully. You can have a very good conversation with him. Um, and that's the Donald Trump that you're going to start seeing more and more of right now. And some people said, but, well, you know, he said terrible things about you. How can you support him? Well, first of all, we buried the hatchet. That was political stuff. Um, and, you know, that happens in American politics, the politics of personal destruction, all that. Uh, is not something that I particularly believe in or anything that I get involved in. Um, but I do recognize that it is a part of the process. We move on because it's not about me. It's not about Mr. Trump. It's about America. And this is what we have to be thinking about. I have found in talking with him that, uh, you know, there's a lot more alignment philosophically and spiritually than I ever thought that there was. And he... He will speak to that. But, you know, that actually uh, surprised me more than anything because I do recognize how a person's image can be greatly distorted, having been the victim of that. Um, I probably understand it better than anybody. And uh, I think as the American people who, who we are focusing on, as they begin to see the real individual there and those who are helping that individual – I think we're going to be comforted as a nation. You know, we have to start working together. We cannot allow the agents of division to continue to separate us. As a nation, our strength is our unity. And we, we just have to sort of ignore those people who are always trying to stir up strife. Uh, and, and I'm appealing to some degree to the media as well. You know, you're part of America, too, and should be interested in strengthening our nation, not in creating divisions, not in creating conflicts all the time. If, if we start having that American attitude, that American spirit that made us great, that took us to the pinnacle in no time at all, believe me, 
everybody will benefit from that. We're also talking about how can we make America a place that's successful for everybody. You know, we have 330 million people. We're, we're going to be competing with China with 1.4 billion, India 1.1 billion. We have to develop all of our people. You know, the people who are the downtrodden in our society, we're not doing those people any favor by patting them on the head and saying, there, there, you poor little thing, I'm going to take care of all your needs. What we need to be doing instead is concentrating on mechanisms to allow those people to climb out of a state of dependency and become part of the strength and fabric of this nation. That's what America is about. It's not about dependency. And it certainly isn't about socialism. You know, socialism is seen as the panacea by some who don't really understand it. I think a lot of young people think socialism is just being concerned about other people. That's not what it is. You know, it's, it's cradle-to-grave government. And, uh, and you let them take care of you, uh, but you give them all of your money. You give them control of your life. They all end up looking the same way, a small group of elites at the top controlling everything a rapidly diminishing middle class, and a vastly expanded, expanded dependent class. That is not what made America great. Donald Trump talks a lot about making America great, but it's not just talk. He means it. Uh, I'm going to be helping him. Others are going to be helping him. Uh, you know, one of the things that I've discovered in this country is we have some incredibly smart people. None of us knows everything. But when we begin to use those smart people effectively to accomplish the goals of America, you're going to see us once again begin to ascend to the pinnacle, to a much higher pinnacle than we've ever achieved before, and that's where America should be. Thank you so much.